Let's go! Garrett Nussmeyer will play versus Arkansas after Max Johnson <laughs> struggled mightily versus Alabama. They'll split reps in practice. And uh, we're going to play both Max and Garrett. Max is going to start, but I'm going to give Garrett significant snaps at the beginning of the game, and then we'll see how it goes. Right smack dab in the middle of all this is the red shirting rule in college football, and Ed Orgeron was asked about that regarding Garrett Nussmeyer. Ed, you, uh, you you talked last week, I believe, about you know, Garrett uh, has you know, he had the opportunity to red shirt or the opportunity to, to, yeah. to play more. In the discussion, just talk about the discussions with him to to go forward with this plan. How, yeah. you know, how much he, he's eager to, to try to play because he could end up burning the whole year. Yes, yeah. he was mad. He was mad he didn't play. And uh, I talked to his father, uh, Doug, a lot, respect a lot. And we had talked on Thursday. They had to be snaps where there was significant, and that if we put him in, he's going to play the rest of the year. And uh, I didn't feel that it was time to throw him in there for a couple of plays. And then us burn his red shirt year. I didn't want to do that to him. And uh, he came in the office yesterday and was adamant about playing. Uh, his father called uh, Jake and said, listen, hey, here's the plan. He wants to play. Let him play. So that's what we're doing. So obviously, it looks like right now he may not red shirt. It all depends on how the game goes. But that's his choice, and that's what he wants to do. So there's plenty of layers to this video and everything that Ed Orgeron just said. But... Once again, I do feel it's important to clarify what the red shirt rule actually means. It used to be in college football that you could only retain a red shirt year if you didn't play at all, but the rules were changed to where if you play four games or fewer, you are allowed to retain your red shirt. Now, I left a word out of that rule, and I want to see if you picked up on it. I'm looking at you. So I want you to really digest this timeline put together by Shay Dixon, a really accurate and good LSU reporter. I know Shay, and this is just crazy. This second tweet, the previous plan, Orgeron stated a week ago was the Nussmeyer camp wanted to keep the red shirt on Garrett. So it was Garrett Nussmeyer and Doug Nussmeyer that wanted to not potentially play more than a game left on the schedule, which is why he didn't play versus Alabama. So if Shea is indeed right that the 110% reason why Ed Orgeron didn't put Garrett Nussmeyer into the game was to preserve his red shirt, that should get you angry, as should the following uh, point of, of this tweet, the second tweet. Nussmeyer is shifting course on the idea himself that he wants to be able to have the chance to play across the final three games, which of course could be a fourth, which gets into a very tricky situation because you want to be viewed as a player's friendly coach. And I totally get it. And we all want what's best for the players. But no matter who you are, no matter what team you play for, if you are the back up quarterback to start the season you have to know that the likelihood that you're going to play in more than four games is relatively high so I did some research today that in 2012 2016 and 2018 LSU's backup quarterbacks played in less than four games but in pretty much every year LSU has played two or more quarterbacks in five or more games so over this past decade, the likelihood that only two quarterbacks are going to play is, or only one quarterback is going to play, is very low. And that actually falls on both ends of the spectrum. If you're really, really, really good, like if you're Joe Burrow and you play in a lot of blowouts, well, your backup's going to play a lot in garbage time. If you're really really bad and or mediocre replacement level which max johnson has been if you look at his qbr it's been under 50 which that analytic is a determinant if you are a replacement level quarterback well max johnson has not really been that great and the third option is if max johnson would have gotten injured earlier in the season then you you're in but that's the thing, as you see here, as this photo zooms in on Max Johnson's shoulder, it was pretty well known and speaking to people that I trust, and Max Johnson had been dealing with some left 
shoulder soreness, okay? Now, he didn't miss practice from what I understand, or if he did, it wasn't any significant time, but still, you know, he had been banged up. He had been taking some hits, as many of you know, um, and that's his throwing shoulder. So, at this point, Nuss has to know, once again, as essentially, in theory, the only scholarship quarterback on the roster, the likelihood that you're going to play and potentially finish out the season while Max is banged up and while Max isn't playing well and you go out versus Ole Miss and you actually do play very well, I I mean, you just can't worry about the red shirt or the future or what potentially could happen down the road, okay? And what should have been done before the season is Ed Orgeron go with Garrett Nussmeyer and his camp and let them know that, look, we are probably going to need you. You are the top backup quarterback on this team. And yeah, uh, you're, the, the likelihood your red shirt gets burned is a 50-50 proposition, but it very well could get burned. And that should have been relayed before the season. And in fact, it should have been relayed weeks ago before uh, the Ole Miss game because Max Johnson really was banged up and he really also at the same time was playing poorly. And I shared this a few weeks ago on a Walker Howard video. The second most important person on your team is oftentimes the backup quarterback. And it's not a position where you can be iffy whether or not you can play him or not if it was Doug Nussmeyer or whoever if it was them saying in last week well we want to preserve uh his red shirt so he can have an extra year of eligibility well yeah that's in the best interest in their minds for them but if you start the season as the top backup quarterback you're essentially as important as any other starter on the team you can't be 50-50 on whether or not you want to play or not. And that is the key thing about this video because Jake Peets has too much on his plate already. He doesn't need to be talking to Player X's dad to see if he wants to change his mind whether or not he plays. If you suit up, you better be ready to get in the game. So let's re-listen to this clip once again from Ed Orgeron. Uh, with this conversation with Doug Nussmeyer regarding his son Garrett, and uh, I talked to his father, uh, Doug, a lot, respect a lot, and we had talked on Thursday. They had to be snaps where there was significant, and that if we put him in, he's going to play the rest of the year. And uh, I didn't feel that it was time to throw him in there for a couple of plays, and then us burn his red shirt year. I didn't want to do that to him. So here's the thing about that quote from Ed Orgeron is that it's unclear whether Doug Nussmeyer or someone in the Nussmeyer camp issued an ultimatum saying, look, don't play uh, Garrett unless he plays a significant amount of snaps. That might have been an ultimatum uh, set by Ed Orgeron himself, which would be even more infuriating. So look, I, I understand Ed Orgeron's no longer the coach of the team, and we're looking towards the future and the Bama Gabins of the past, but I want you to understand how mad that should make you, and it bothers me a lot because I take LSU Bama very seriously. I really want to win against them every single time, and what could have been in the way of us pulling the biggest upset uh, in that, in this series history, and maybe ever, probably ever, is a player's dad. Like, really think about that, okay? Because... I want you to just put the timeline together. So we had this full bye week where Garrett Nussmeyer clearly outplayed Max Johnson versus Ole Miss. Then in that bye week, you could have talked to Doug Nussmeyer during that entire bye week, but you waited to the Thursday before the game while all the hours of prep, not only on the offensive side of the ball, the defensive side of the ball, all the players who gutted it out versus Alabama, the blood, sweat, and tears that went into the preparation of that game, and the one thing that we were missing was a quarterback who could make game-changing throws. Now, we don't know if Garrett Nussmeyer would have made those throws that Max Johnson didn't make, 
But what we can say is that there needed to be a change at quarterback. And what potentially held back the change at quarterback, uh, the game's most important position, the biggest gap between the two teams was Bryce Young and Max Johnson. What potentially held it back was a man who has nothing to do with LSU football other than his son playing for the university. Now, like I said at the end of my Gary Nussmeyer film study last week, that I, I did say that Ed Orgeron should get with Garrett Nussmeyer and see what he's comfortable doing. Maybe Garrett Nussmeyer didn't want to play. Maybe Garrett Nussmeyer uh, didn't want his red shirt burned, him personally. I doubt Garrett Nussmeyer would have said that. I doubt this whole time Garrett Nussmeyer didn't want to play. Uh, I think just doing the research, you know, I did on my Nuss film studies during this offseason, uh, he seems like a very competitive young man who, by the way, was hurt in his playoff game. And speaking to different people that were around that program, it, they said it, it it hurt him a lot that he couldn't be on the field and help out his teammates. And he is a very good teammate. I, I brought that up plenty of times. I sincerely doubt that Garrett Nussmeyer didn't want to play. So there's going to be a lot of ironic things that happen in the end of this video because, look, I commend Ed Orgeron for his act of compassion. That seems to be his intent because, as you heard with that quote, he said, well, I didn't want to do that to him. I didn't want to burn his red shirt because, look, in a perfect world, everybody would like to have that extra year of eligibility. But that's the funniest thing of it all is that the best thing for all parties involved here would have been to play Garrett Nussmeyer, okay? Like we've said from the get-go, the likelihood, first off, that his red shirt was going to be retained was very, very, very small, okay? We all agree on that. The second thing is getting snaps at quarterback is a black and white deal, okay? It's not like wide receiver or any other uh, position in football where there's a heavier rotation, there's multiples of that position more often than not playing at the same time. Outside of kicker and punter, only one quarterback plays, okay? And it's hard to get to that spot at any school. As many of you know, there have been far more talented quarterbacks than Garrett Nussmeyer, who never even got the opportunity to be the guy. I mean, look at Joe Burrow, Cam Newton. They were only mop-up duty backups, and they're two of the best, if not the best, players to ever play college football. My point is you're never guaranteed this opportunity to be on this stage. It is so hard, and I hate it uh, that for whatever reason that Gary Nussmeyer was robbed of this marquee chance. And by the way, this opportunity just happens to be the biggest non-direct rivalry we have in college football. LSU Alabama has been the marquee matchup since the game of the century in 2011, and it will continue to be that because as you guys are looking right now, the ratings for this game were through the roof, and there wouldn't have been anything for Garrett Nussmeyer's profile that would have catapulted it better than winning this game versus Alabama when we really needed him, and that's the thing. He would have, it, let's just say Garrett Nussmeyer theoretically would have gone out there and won that game. He would have been a true freshman sensation. We would start talking about his name the same way we're talking about Caleb Williams now. That's how big of an opportunity this was. I feel bad for everybody in that locker room that could have won that game, which could have been huge for recruiting. Maybe Aaron Anderson says, look, I'm flipping back uh, to LSU. I see my guys going out there and winning. I want to wear the state colors. You don't know what all could have changed with that game, including our very own bowl eligibility, which, by the way, we're going to have a rough 2-1 and one finish to end the year because, well, A&M and uh, Arkansas are going to be tough games for us to win. So, once again, because of one person's eligibility, we're, we lost a very critical win for us to get bowl eligible. Now... Here's another irony for this whole situation. It's Miles Brennan, right? You know, they were trying to get Miles 
back healthy for this Alabama game. It didn't happen. It sucks, and he's moved on. But the reason why Miles Brennan is very, very, very relevant is Garrett Nussmeyer could have taken the Miles Brennan route with his LSU career anyway because, remember, we had the trivia question earlier. When I listed the red shirt rule, you let's see if you got the trivia right. I'm going to say it again, okay? You can play four games or fewer and remain or, or remain and you can keep your eligibility okay now notice what word i left out of that you could play four games or fewer and you could keep that year of eligibility and while you actually come up with the answer to that uh, i want to say thanks to everyone that's come to this channel it's really really fun how we're growing and it's great and i absolutely love it so uh yeah I, I just it's just really cool man and i wish the best uh for nuts and everyone involved so uh the word that we left out is freshman right because normally we think of red shirting we think of freshman right the term red shirt freshman so the major irony is the guy that put us in this position is the perfect example that you should play as many games as you possibly can if you're given that opportunity as a true freshman because miles brennan did play a lot of games as a true freshman and guess what happened as a sophomore the first year, the redshirt rule, he only played one game as Joe Burrow's backup and was able to redshirt as a sophomore, okay? One of the few quarterbacks who's actually redshirted as a sophomore. It is kind of strange to play so much as a true freshman and then you redshirt as a sophomore. So, the thing is, Garrett Nussmeyer could have redshirted down the road, and that's the thing. If he would have lost this LSU job Anyway, next year, with a healthy Max Johnson coming back, Walker Howard coming into the equation, and maybe a quarterback from the transfer portal, he could have redshirted next year, right? It's not just a freshman thing. So add that to another reason why this was so horribly handled by Ed Orgeron. And it sounds like we're piling on a man that is walking out the door, but I just kept getting tired of hearing, well, we left it all out there against Alabama and we weren't intimidated. And well, yeah, we were. You were not willing to put the guy that we really needed to go in and win the game for us into the game. And by the way, there's a lot of other things you could be angry about Ed Orgeron, including uh, kicking a field goal with the quarterback who failed on the first three downs, uh, which would have cut it to a three-score game with a big leg kicker. And uh, then, of course, finally changing up your defense when it's, what, 15 games too late? So, I mean... I, I, I just, it, it's bad. Everything about this was just so bad. And I hate it for you, the viewer. And I'm more, once again, I say it again. I hate it more for Garrett Nussmeyer and the players on this team. Because I guarantee you in the back of their mind, they were like, wait, why did why did all of this happen? We put, we were right there. That was our game. We could have, we could have been the story. But, you know, we just move right along. So I hope you enjoyed this video today. Once again, like I always say, I like Ed Orgeron personally. He took us to our highest point, and I wish him nothing but the best in his future $17 million endeavor. Uh, but, you know, this was, you know, one of those things where I don't know if he'll think that he was being compassionate or abiding by what other people think. And this isn't the first time that Ed Orgeron you know, gets input from players, families, and, and, and you, you should do that, but it's it's a dangerous precedent to set when you're trying to please everyone. And you guys know that. You can't please everyone. And you ultimately, when you're teetering on whether or not you... And, and look, it is important to do right by the player. You, don't, you shouldn't just do anything for the betterment of the team, right? But you should do... 99% of the time what's best for the team over what is proverbially best for the individual player. I could understand. I could understand if this was Garrett Nussmeyer with only one year of eligibility left. I would totally get it. But he has the maximum three years of eligibility remaining, and the red shirt's going to get burned anyway. It made no rational sense, and it, it should have been prevented. It is! Power, hour, LSU, boom! 
Oh, we're doing chicken wings tonight. Let's go. <laughs>